game. <sighs> we lost. I wonder, if we had superhuman abilities, maybe our team could run faster and shoot more hoops? Perhaps. Um, but how? Maybe, if we get hit by some cosmic gamma ray, maybe we get those superhuman abilities. But why would you think that could give you superpowers? You see, I've seen in a few comic books how some normal guy gets into some gamma ray accident and then he gains superhuman abilities? You mean that's not possible? But why? You need to understand what happens when ionizing radiation interacts with matter. Remember when we discussed what atoms are made of? Yes, it's made of a nucleus that has a positively charged proton and a neutron which has no charge at all. Then around it orbits a negatively charged electron. Yes, okay, let's pretend that we are in a basketball game. A center is the proton, and the center's guard is the neutron, and a point guard hovering around them is the electron. These three are holding each other together and represent the atom. The negatively charged electron can only orbit around the nucleus at a certain distance. The electron naturally does not come closer or further than its allowed or quantized orbit. And because of this, electrons have very specific energies corresponding to the orbits that they're in. This is the electron's energy level. When radiation in the form of a wave or a particle interacts with this atom, one of three things can happen. Excitation, ionization, or radiative losses that will, of course, happen on the amount of energy carried and transferred by the radiation to the atom. For instance, excitation happens when the energy from an incoming radiation interacts with the atom and the energy gets absorbed by the electron, but the absorbed energy does not exceed the electron's binding energy with the nucleus. It is, however, more than the energy that the electron is used to. As a result, the electron gets excited and moves up to a higher energy level. And then what happens? The atom as a unit naturally wants to stabilize itself so the electron will want to expel its absorbed energy in order to get back to its normal energy level. This expelled excitation energy is emitted mostly in the form of heat or infrared radiation. Then, after emitting the excess energy, the electron goes back to its normal orbit. This process is called de-excitation. So because the atom's structure is not changed when excitation happens, the interaction will not cause any significant biological effect? That's right! I think I know what will happen if the incoming ionizing radiation has energy that is equal or greater than the electron's binding energy. The, the electron, electron will be expelled, expelled from, from the, the atom. atom. Cool. And that's what we call ionization. Hmm. But how are all these interactions related to someone getting superhuman abilities through radiation? Okay, so imagine that the atoms we have been talking about are atoms in your body. What do you think would happen when your atom's electrons start splitting away from its nucleus? Wait. Oh no. You're right. That's awful. But don't fret. That will only happen in cases when the energy of the radiation is just too high. Like when eating 8 million bananas in one go. That is right. Everyday exposure to natural background radiation poses very little danger. Radiation sources used in various industries have safety protocols in place. Like the smoke detector, for instance. There's a radioactive material in there? The source is radioactive americium. It emits alpha particles. Alpha particles are big and travel only a few centimeters in the air and can be easily blocked with their bare hands or a thin piece of paper. So, we're safe here. Beta particles are smaller than alpha particles that can penetrate paper. Its penetrating power will vary sufficiently as thickness changes. In fact, 
They are used to control the thickness of paper and other packaging materials produced in factories. What about X-rays and gamma rays? Unlike alpha and beta particles, X-rays and gamma rays are electromagnetic waves and are more energetic. Hence, they can penetrate much deeper into a medium, and they can only be blocked by a thick concrete or a sheet of lead. That's the reason why medical radiographers and radiologic technologists are required to move away from a patient and operate the machine behind a shield, as they will be doing the procedure to a lot of patients in a day. It's important that their exposure is minimized. That's awesome! But I think I see now that getting a high dose of ionizing radiation isn't really gonna give me superhuman abilities, right? Not really. So I guess I'll just leave that fantasy in comic books for now. I should just tell my team to practice even harder and maybe stay out of the sun and its harmful UV rays. That sounds great.